What's going on guys, my name is Matt and I am back with a new PC build. This time the price point is $1000 and for that price you're getting a beast of a gaming PC. This is an all AMD system featuring a Ryzen CPU and a new AMD GPU that just released today. In this video I'm going to be showing you each of the parts, talk about why I picked them, and finally show you a ton of gaming benchmarks. This system is not only good for gaming but also good for stuff like streaming and even light video editing. So without further ado, let's get into the parts that make up this $1000 gaming beast. People have been building a lot with Intel CPUs ever since the release of their new 12th gen chips and rightfully so, the price to performance of new Intel CPUs is great, but due to recent price drops, AMD CPUs are now starting to offer a similar value. Because of this, I decided to go with the tried and trusted AMD Ryzen 5 5600X. This is 6 core 12 thread CPU running on the latest Zen 3 architecture, and while it did release all the way back in late 2020, it still trades blows with Intel's new 12400 at about $210, this chip offers a good value for the money and unlike the 12400 is actually able to be overclocked. Now I did leave it at stock speeds for my test, but I know for many of you out there, having the ability to overclock is great as you're able to squeeze even more performance out of this little chip. It has a base speed of 3.7 GHz and can turbo all the way up to 4.6 GHz. It supports PCIe Gen 4 and overall is a great pick for a mid-range system like this one. Sure, I could have went for the 5600G, but based on my own testing, the 5600X outperforms it a fair bit and because we are using a dedicated graphics card, the 5600G's integrated graphics wouldn't really be used at all. One other nice thing about the 5600X is the fact it comes with a decent stock cooler in the box. This is the Wraith Stealth Cooler which does a decent job of keeping this 5600X cool and quiet, but there was enough room in the budget so I decided to upgrade to an aftermarket cooler. After looking at a few different options, I ended up pulling the trigger on this ID Cooling SE224XT. This cooler came in a little under $30 and for that price it's offering some pretty good value. It is an all blacked out design which fits nicely with this build and performance on it is great. It has four direct contact copper heat pipes along with a pretty substantial aluminum fin array and a 120mm black fan. You'll be able to see temps in the benchmark section of this video, but my overall impressions is this does a much better job of cooling our 5600X and also staying whisper quiet. Moving on to the motherboard, I went with one I've used a few times in the past which is the ASRock B550M Pro 4. Depending on where you get it, it can be had for as little as $115 which for the price is great. It offers 4 DIMM slots, multiple M.2 slots, good PCIe expansion, an adequate VRM setup for even a Ryzen 9 CPU at stock speeds, and overall I think it looks pretty nice too. It features a micro ATX design, and the back panel I.O. isn't bad either. This board works with our 5600X right out of the box and I've never had a problem with it. I think this is probably the third or fourth time I've built with this model of board and can highly recommend it. This board along with everything else mentioned in the video is going to be linked in the description below so make sure to head down there to check out current pricing. The next thing to talk about is RAM. At this price point you're kind of on the edge of where I would start to consider going to 32GB of memory, but for this build I ended up sticking with a 16GB kit. What I went with is this 2x8GB kit of G-Skill Ripjaws 5 memory running at 3600MHz CL18. At about $75 this is a good value per dollar kit offering fast speeds and a neutral all black color scheme. This is a two stick kit meaning it's running in dual channel operation and because it is only taking up two of the four DIMM slots, it means upgrading to 32GB in the future will be as easy as popping in two more 8GB sticks. 16GB is plenty for modern gaming, streaming, and even light video editing. With that being said, if you're wanting to edit 4K videos on this system, stream heavily, or do other workstation applications then I would recommend going for 32GB of RAM out of the gate. This will just give you more headroom for your application applications and can smooth out your experience a bit. If you do upgrade to 32 gigabytes, I would still recommend going for a fast 3600 megahertz kit as Ryzen loves fast memory and using a 3600 megahertz dual channel kit ensures you're getting the most out of your 5600X. Now let's go ahead and move on to storage. At this price point, I usually like to go for an SSD, preferably an NVMe drive. After looking at some options, I opted to go for a 500GB WD SM570. At under $50, you're getting 500GB of blazing fast NVMe storage in the ultra compact M.2 form factor. It is advertised read and write speeds of over 3000MB per second and is regarded as a great budget NVMe drive. 500GB is enough for your OS, applications, and a modern 
modest games library. I think for the average person, one terabyte is more than enough, especially right out of the gate, as upgrading in the future can come in the form of another SSD or even a large mechanical drive for mass storage. So now let's talk about the GPU. As of today, AMD has just released a refresh of its 6600 XT in the form of the new AMD Radeon RX 6650 XT. This card features updated memory chips and faster clocks, giving you even better performance over the 6600 XT it replaces for a very similar price. Now it's hard to know exactly how much this will cost once it hits shelves, but I valued it at $400 for this video. The particular model we're using in this build is the PowerColor Red Devil model. This is one of PowerColor's more premium 6650 XTs offering a dual fan design, metal backplate, customizable RGB, and an overall neutral color scheme. Just like all 6650 XTs, this has 8GB of GDDR6 video memory, 2048 stream processor units, and offers great 1080p and even 1440p gameplay. Some other nice features about this card in particular are the LED illuminated ports for easier plugging in of display cables, along with a dual BIOS switch giving you options for better overclocking or more silent operation. This is just slightly wider than a dual slot card, which is kind of annoying. I wish they would have slimmed it down to fit in just two slots, but other than that, I don't really have any complaints with this card. It runs cool, quiet, and again, for full benchmarks and temps, make sure to stick around to the end of the video. To power this system, I didn't need anything crazy high wattage. The estimated power usage for this system was only 350 watts, but I still wanted something with a decent amount of headroom for future upgrades and to make sure our system is operating in a high part of the efficiency curve. After looking at a bunch of options, I ended up settling on the EVGA GD600. This is 600 watt, 80 plus gold power supply. It works great in this system, supplying plenty of clean power to all of our parts. It's not modular, but has all black sleep cables, making sure the build maintains a clean look. It has all the connectors for the parts in our build and overall I can highly recommend it for the 60-ish bucks I paid for it. Finally, let's talk about the case. What I went for is a budget option I've never built in, but I'm happy I tried it for this build. This is the Raid Max i203. It has a tempered glass side panel, power supply basement, mesh front intake, and two included fans. These are that kind of static fake RGB, which I'm personally fine with, but I know that it's not everyone's cup of tea. It's pretty easy to build in, and for under $60, I think it offers some pretty good value in my opinion. Is this gonna match the quality of a hundred plus dollar Corsair or NZXT? case, no, but it holds all of our parts, offers decent airflow, looks objectively nice, and doesn't break the bank. All in all, for $1,000, you're getting an all AMD PC that's packing a big gaming punch. It's using all high quality parts that work well together and should last you for a long time. There are obviously a million different ways I could have spent this budget, but if you would have changed something, let me know what you would have went with in the comments below. So now it's time for the gaming benchmarks. This time I did something different by just having them with some music in the background. Let me know if you prefer this over my normal gameplay commentary. In the top left, you'll be able to see GPU stats, CPU stats, along with real-time frame rate and frame time data. I tried to test a bunch of games, but if there's ones you think I missed, let me know in the comments below. So without further ado, let's get into the benchmarks. <laughs>
As you can see, the system performs great in gaming and temps were also very well kept under control. The system definitely wasn't silent, but I wouldn't call it loud either. Really, it just has a soft hum while gaming, which is to be expected with a system like this. The 6650 XT isn't a huge jump up in performance compared to the 6600 XT it's replacing, but it does offer a minor bump while still maintaining the same price, which in my book is a win. This all AMD system for $1000 is pretty darn good if you ask me, and I think the budget was spent pretty wisely, but again, if you would have done something different, let me know in the comments below. So yeah guys, I think this wraps this video up. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. And as always, this is Matt from Tech by Matt, signing out.